Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I just wanted to do a quick comparison of the 2015 Nvidia Shield Android TV and the new 2017 version. So here they are side by side. As you can see, the smaller one is the 2017 version. I was blown away when I pulled this out of the box and saw how small it was compared to the older one. My wife actually surprised me with the new Nvidia Shield. She's got an Amazon Fire TV stick in her room. She said it's too slow for her. I do have Cody loaded up on there and everything, but it is pretty slow. So she wanted an Nvidia Shield for her room. I gave her my old one. She went out and bought me this brand new one. And I'm really digging it. The internals are the same, except for a few ports missing on the back of the newer one. One of those ports I will miss a lot. It's the micro SD card slot. Now I used a 128 gigabyte card inside of my older shield. I added it to internal storage, but the newer one doesn't have a micro SD card slot. So I will have to use an external hard drive to add more internal storage. Not a big deal, but if you need that SD card slot, I would go with the older one. The newer shield is also missing the micro USB OTG. Now there's a micro USB input on the older shield. You could hook this up to your PC and root your device. Now I rooted mine when I first got it. I reset it. I no longer need to root my device. I mean, there's nothing that I can't do on it that I can without root. So I really won't miss that. And I'm pretty sure that if you do want to root the newer device, all you would need is a male USB 2.0 to a male USB 2.0. The next big change is the controller. The newer one has this mosaic look to it and I really love the feel of it. The buttons are in different places and you do have physical buttons for home, back, and play. It's also Bluetooth instead of Wi-Fi, so you can theoretically connect this to a Windows PC with Bluetooth or another Android device like a tablet or phone. I've also noticed that the battery does last a lot longer in the newer controller. Now I've had my 2015 Shield since it released, so this controller has had a lot of use to it. The battery's been charged and discharged several times, so it is showing its age. So overall, I think it's a cool little upgrade. If you already have the 2015 version and it's working well for you, there's really no reason to upgrade. These have the exact same chip inside of them. There was speculation that they did shrink the die, but they haven't. I'm gonna go over some specs here using IDA64 and show you a comparison. On the left, we have the readings from the 2015 Shield. On the right, we have the readings from the 2017. The only difference here is the name. Foster for the 2015 and Darcy for the 2017. They both have three gigabytes of RAM and everything else is the same. Moving on to the CPU, both of them run the NVIDIA Tegra X1. They're eight cores, 20 nanometers, so they haven't shrunk the die at all. And they're both based on NVIDIA Maxwell technology. So here we have it, 256 cores on each, L2 cache, 256 kilobytes. They're the exact same thing. No Pascal in the newer version, like a lot of people were speculating. I wish they did change it over, but it's still Maxwell. But it still runs really well. This is the best Android TV box on the market, hands down. And I think it's gonna be for another year or two. So overall, they're pretty much the same unit, minus the footprint and minus the SD card slot, which is important to a lot of people. If you're looking to get an NVIDIA Shield Android TV, you can actually find a used 2015 on Amazon or eBay, or you could just purchase a brand new 2017 for $199. It comes with a remote and a controller. They also have another bundle that just comes with the remote itself for $179. These are well worth it. I don't know anybody that has one that doesn't love it. So my wife wanted to get one because her brand new Fire Stick was too slow for her. She doesn't even know the difference between 4K and 720p, but she noticed the difference in speed with these units. So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I just wanted to do a quick comparison here. In my opinion, this is the best set top box you can get. You can play pretty much any retro game, even GameCube on here. PSP runs great, N64 runs flawlessly. That'll be my next video. I wanna show you how to get N64 up and running so you can play your favorite retro games. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because I got a lot of great content on the way. And like always, thanks for watching.